All right, guys, we have some big breaking news with regard to Boeing. This, of course, in the wake of major safety issues and huge questions, especially surrounding the death of a Boeing whistleblower. We can put this up on the screen from CNN. So Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun is going to step down. Um, this is part of a larger shakeup of the company's leadership. Apparently, Boeing's chairman and the head of the commercial airplane unit are also leaving. Um, the CEO will not be out immediately, but he is planning to leave what they describe as the beleaguered company by the end of the year. And just so happens, we have a great guy here to talk about all of this. Um, Matt Stoller is the author of Goliath. He also works at the American Economic Liberties Project and writes at the Substack Big, and he is here to react to this news. Great to have you, Matt. Hey, thanks, hey, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, so yeah, are Boeing's problems over Go now off. that they've, yeah. <laughs> it's, they've it's, taken out the it's CEO? It's fixed. It's fixed. It's great. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, there's a lot to say about this, but Boeing has a history of uh, of having their CEOs resign and being like, oh, you know, everything is fixed. Um, so I think this happened in like 2003. It's happened at other, you know, and also high level executives. Oh, we're caught for bribery. Like, whoa, whoops, because um, <laughs> uh, they have a big defense unit. Yeah. And they just what they do is they if if you are the one who gets caught, then they will then they'll say resign. We'll pay you off mm. and you go away. But the the rule at Boeing is don't get caught not like let's Change fix your stuff, business. right? Yeah. So it's it, it's also, he's not resigning. He's going to stay there until 20, you know, for the rest mm -hmm. of the year, yeah. which is, it's, you know, it's it's March. Right. Like, it's nine months. <laughs> like, a like, that's a lot months. of, right. that's like a baby, right? That's a whole baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Good point. That's a good point. I mean, like, <laughs> go away, right? Like, it, it, it can't, it, it, either you take responsibility for it and you resign tomorrow or you're not. And like, it, this is, it, it's like classic, you know, half-assing it, right? Um, no, Boeing needs to be nationalized. It, it is a disaster. Uh, it's not a viable enterprise right now. Um, it, they're not making safe planes. Take us back to, to how this all happened. So everything, January 5, the door plug blows off, right. 737 MAX 9. David Calhoun specifically was brought in to fix the problems of the updated software system that leads to the death of some 500 people previously. Right. That's his entire pledge. But what really gets revealed is like the rot of Boeing itself, which you've done a lot of work on. Right. So give us the backstory about the, you know, about airline deregulation, right. Boeing financialization, spinning off Spirit Error Systems, which coincidentally is now involved, you know, here now they're buying it back. Well, how the hell did this happen? Yeah, yeah. so Boeing was a crown jewel yeah. of American air engineering, right? It's one of the best companies yes. we've ever created. Um, so you, to understand how it got ruined, you have to start with the, the customers, so the, the airlines. Um, Boeing has a big defense arm. That's always been corrupt yep. and terrible. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but this is a company that they, they – Designed the B fifty two in like a weekend. Mm -hmm. They they made amazing flying machines. They also were always disciplined by competition. Okay, but in in the nineteen seventies, we decided to deregulate airlines. And what's important about airline deregulation is that before deregulation, airlines were public utilities. And so if you had cost right as an airline, they the the government would say, all right, you have a certain amount of cost. We're going to say you make ten percent on that, right? And that, that's just the way it works. And so there's no incentive to skimp. There's no incentive to skimp on customer, like service, on flights, on anything. You serve people steak, you make a 10% profit on that. Mm -hmm. So there are problems with the public utility model because it leads to inflating costs. But you're never incentivized to screw people over or screw workers over because you make less money. Mm. Deregulation flipped that. And deregulation said, now we're gonna move to a system where you're just trying to take cost out to make things more efficient. So what happens? Well, they break their unions. They start to screw their customers. They find all sorts of ways to do junk fees. They're not actually more profitable. Like airlines periodically have to be bailed out, but uh, they cut service to lots of regional cities, right? So, so the air grid is different today than it used to be. But they also start negotiation, negotiating more, much more aggressively with aerospace producers like Boeing. And Boeing starts to change the way that they um, that they price. So for example, Boeing said when they developed the 737 MAX, we'll give you a rebate of a million dollars if you have to change the way you train pilots. Mm -hmm. So they one of the reasons, the reason that they screwed up the 737 MAX design is because they were like, we don't want to change all the airport infrastructure. We don't want to have to train. We're going to tell all our clients they don't have to get their pilots retrained on new hardware. This is going to be the same thing. But of course, it was designed poorly because the engines were too big for the for the body of the the uh, the airplane. Now, mm. 
one of the so so the the airline deregulation was part of a whole financialization of the American economy. So in the 1990s, it finally slams into into Boeing, and um, there's only one other aeros, commercial aerospace maker by the 1990s aside from Boeing, and that's McDonnell Douglas. And the government says we love efficiency and we love monopolies. And Boeing is a super high tech, awesome company, very, run by very sophisticated people. They make the best stuff in the world. Very similar to Apple. Very similar to Google, very similar to Amazon. So they said, you know what? Buy McDonnell Douglas's commercial aerospace unit, even though that will clearly reduce competition. It will create a domestic monopoly and the only other competitor will be Airbus. So the government pushed Boeing to do this. Boeing didn't need a lot of pushing. Boeing also pushed the government to let them do it. And when that happened, uh, Boeing flipped and financialized. Mm. So, so and was it, this was like this was this is a Clinton administration. Okay. So this is 1996, 97, 98, mm. right? That's like peak 90s. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like you know, yeah, like yeah, like, like, Macarena's on yeah, the stage. Totally, really. totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. the uh, the the you know Jennifer Aniston haircut. Yes. Thing, right. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so so Boeing merges with McDonnell Douglas. There's no more domestic competition. So if you're an aerospace engineer, you don't like Boeing. Too bad, right. nowhere else to work. If you're mm. a supplier and you're supplying Boeing, too bad, nowhere else. Like you you have one option, maybe two, right? And you know, Aeros, Airbus, it's European, right? So they take forever to do things. And I'm, uh, mm -hmm. um, and uh, no, I mean, it, it, today, if you want to get a jet from Airbus, it's 2027 20, or 2028 until wow. they can deliver yeah. because there's so much demand. Hmm. Um, uh, so, okay, so they, um, the, what what starts to happen in, in almost immediately when the merger when the merger happens is there's a fight between the MBA weenies, uh, the bean counters, and the engineers. And mm. the engineers have always had a lot of power at Boeing because they go to the MBA weenies and they say, "Give us a bunch of money. We'll design a cool plane." And it always worked before, so usually they said yes. But in 1996, seven, eight, they were like, "Nope. We are now going to offshore things. We are going to do things in a completely different way, and we're going to." you know, you guys are no longer an advantage for the company, you're a cost center. These are the engineering mm -hmm. people, right? The workers, the people that make the planes and have the embedded knowledge to, to actually construct these things. And so they go after them and the, and the bean counters win and they start to cut safety. They start to, you know, there's the first strike of the engineers ever, like it was a white collar union that was more like a debating society or a club. And then they actually go on strike in the, in the early 2000s. And um, the first plane that's built with the new outsourcing model is the 787 Dreamliner. It's sort of a disaster. Yeah, Boeing moves. That. Yeah, Boeing yeah. moves their headquarters from Seattle to Chicago, so they don't have to be near the people they're laying off. Mm. They move a lot of work to South Carolina because mm -hmm. it's because it's um, non-union. Non yeah, and uh, now they move their headquarters to DC because. For, for lobbying purposes. <laughs> um, and so it just gradually, and the 737 MAX is the, yeah. was the culmination where they decided to make explicitly unsafe, bad engineering decisions for financial reasons. And they haven't really fixed it. I mean, the software patch is better, but that needs to be completely re-engineered. Wow. And that's why uh, that they also didn't fix any of the, I mean, the the door blowout with Alaska Air, that that's not some big engineering thing. That's just like the dudes just didn't put the yeah. screws in, right? Like yeah. that's like yeah. that's like very, very bad, right? <laughs> just they were not doing quality checks. Right. So it's embarrassing, but also it, it that that whole culture that was put in there in the 90s of of bean counters who are super hostile to safety, to consumers, to customers, to workers, they need to be removed. They need to be pulled out of that that institution. I think it needs to be nationalized. Um, and and the, the company needs to be restructured. Mm. Otherwise, we have all of these planes that are Boeing planes, and people are terrified to fly right. them right. as they should be. And right. that, I mean, how many billions of dollars we bailed these people out, right? I mean, that's what people would say, like, oh, you're messing with private enterprise. I'm like, right. okay, but you know, how, how many, 50 billion, 100 billion, just in the last decade or so? If we go back to 2001, it's probably even more in terms of number of taxpayer dollars that we've used to prop up the Boeing company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the CARES Act, right, yeah. during, during, the, uh, during the pandemic, yes. they put a $25 billion line item for like, 
It was not, they didn't say Boeing. They were like, for a national security aerospace <laughs> company that rhymes with schmoing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and, and, you know, and then they didn't have to take the money because yeah. they could just borrow money at preferential interest rates because everyone knew, okay, mm. Boeing is a federal They're backstop. taking care of. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so you can't you can't even measure it, right? Because everybody, you know, Boeing is too big to fail. It's, a, it's essentially a government, when I say nationalize, I don't mean, you know, we need to take it over. Like we... It is, we own it. Yeah, I mean, right. we've been backstopping it for a long time, as mm -hmm. you noted. So like, we should just formally take it over, restructure it, probably break it up so that, you know, you have the defense arm and then maybe you create a couple of civilian air aerospace makers, reintroduce some competition. Uh, and that's that's the way that you definancialize this industry. Mm. Um, how does the FAA fit into this picture? Were there failures there as well? Is that also part of this deregulatory train? Track? Yeah, so so it it's a great question. Uh, so this gets to like a question of political economy, right? Prior to deregulation, because costs are not a problem, but a benefit, they didn't want to get, they didn't want to gut their regulators. Regulators were fine. If regulators imposed costs on them, cool. That's just more money, right? right. That's another 10% mm -hmm. of profit, right? After deregulation, all of a sudden, the airline industry and Boeing and the aerospace makers are lobbying to gut the FAA. And so you see this systemic reduction in, uh, in funding, and ultimately Boeing is is uh, they they they're doing voluntary like self regulation because there just aren't even enough it's inspectors. Mm -hmm. um, and the political economy, there's no political support to actually regulate the industry, either the airlines or Boeing. Now, under Trump, um, and this was a real embarrassment to the FAA and uh, and to frankly the America um, when the when the Max crashed, right? for the second time, America is renowned for having the best um, aviation regulators in the world. Mm. People followed us, right? Because we were really good and cared mm. about safety. Trump was the last, um, uh, this was, I think, a, under Trump, it, America was the last country to ground the max, yes. mm. which was awful. I mm. mean, they're, 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 it was wow. just awful, right? And under Biden, and I'm not a Biden partisan, mm -hmm. there are a lot of parts of the Biden administration that have been really problematic. But the FAA, first of all, has the first has a, a full-time administrator. It's always been acting because they never send it, never bother confirming it. They actually have one. And they've been very aggressive. They've put caps on, on the number of planes Boeing can produce, which hits their cash flow, um, which is which hurts. It hurts. They have inspectors on the ground actually looking at the safety systems. Um, they're being very aggressive. They also are thinking of putting a cap on the growth of United Airlines, which is super aggressive because of safety problems there. And so what you're seeing is actual governance from the FAA and the Department of Transportation. It's not enough, and we have to restructure the political economy of the whole industry, but it is something, and that is more than we've had in a really long time. And uh, lastly, Matt, what did you make of the specifics of the whistleblower who was found dead in the middle of his deposition? But what did you make of the specifics of the allegations he was making about Boeing and what they had to lose um, with this individual who, by all accounts, was very credible, who was spilling the tea about their production, especially in South Carolina? Yeah, I mean, what I, from what I understand, I mean, he was saying things that were pretty extraordinary about the, particularly the 77 Dreamliner mm -hmm. and you know, things like how they would, the managers would like steal uh, defective parts from the closet where they kept them saying, don't use these parts. They would steal them and then put them on the planes right. to like, you know, stuff like that. And it was very, um, you know, they had, he had been a whistleblower for seven years, but the stuff that he had been, you know, he was deposed that day that he died was pretty incendiary and he was gonna, gonna do more. And so, you know, look, I'm not saying that Boeing, killed him, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's weird that he would be found dead, but they totally killed him. <laughs> right? like, like, Why don't you cover your ass for legal purposes? <laughs> I mean, yeah, um, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm just kidding, but I'm right. not kidding. Yeah. Well, there is a, there needs to be a fulsome investigation and Boeing had a lot to lose from this uh, man's allegations. Yeah, I mean, look, they, they don't deserve the benefit of the doubt. That's like the, the bottom line yeah, here is right. that they clearly, the company, you know, there were, when the first Max crashed, okay, that's a tragedy, but then they knew 
right? The board knew yes. that there were safety issues and they didn't do anything about it. And then the second one crashed. So this is a company willing to kill people, yeah. right? We know that. I don't, you know, obviously I, don't, I have no idea what happened, right? Mm -hmm. But um, like by all accounts, the guy was not suicidal. He told friends, you know, if I die, it's not suicide. And like, I think the most telling thing is that his last meal was Taco Bell and no mm. one's last meal before they kill themselves <laughs> is Taco Bell. So like, I, I don't- I don't know Taco if I Bell. agree with that, yeah. that analysis. I'm not gonna not. stand for that. Oh, well, <laughs> I, like, I like Taco Bell too much. All right, well- um, That said, I think your point is taken is that, look, this is a company, again, that was criminally negligent, that right. avoided criminal charges by the skin of their teeth last time around. There's a lot of people with a lot to lose on this one. There's no reason for the yeah, DOJ right. not to give them, you know, not to give, throw the book at them at least right. this time around. And so man who's been making very credible allegations, well, very inconvenient timing yeah. you know, for them. Yeah, yeah. really very fortunate right. for them that he's That's taken right. out of the picture. I'll just say that. Yeah. Um, right. Matt, thank you so much. Great to have you. Thanks, Appreciate man. it. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, our pleasure. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.